Good afternoon. My name is Kayla Bradham, host of the Legacy After the Locker Room podcast, here today with our guest, John Pointer. Good afternoon, John. Hi, Kayla. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us today. I'm so excited to have you as our guest. And John, I just want to start out by saying um, you're doing some really important work. Welcome to the Legacy After the Locker Room podcast. Do us a favor, tell the listeners a little bit about your story. How did you get started as a little boy being interested in football and where did that take you in the NFL? Wow, that goes way back. <laughs> well, I live currently here in Nashville, Tennessee. My hometown is only 60 miles south from Nashville. It's called Columbia, Tennessee, very quaint hometown. I grew up in the era of the civil rights. So as a little boy, um, I saw some of the uh, segregation of the South. I remember my, my mom taking me to the courthouse and I, we, we, I saw signs that were taken down, but yet they were in storage areas for whites only and for coloreds, you know, and I still remember those things. I was, um, less than 10 years old and the assassination of Dr. King and Dr. Uh, President Kennedy. So those things were very, very deep within my soul. The beauty about my family, we had a wonderful life, uh, we, and we still do. Um, but my family raised us as far as to understand education, intelligence, be respectful, and if somebody's in your way, either you go around or you go over and keep on moving. My mom, um, as I told you briefly, my mom lives with us. She was nearly a 40 year school teacher, both in the segregated South and doing integration after the Jim Crow era. Um, she taught English, taught science, taught reading, uh, got her master's and also our undergrad at HBCUs. Uh, my brother was a, a basketball player, got his degree uh, here in Middle Tennessee. My father, believe it or not, was a tight end for the Tennessee State A&I, that's, uh, uh, excuse me, architect and industrial um, uh, back in the day, Tennessee State A&I but he had to go home after his mom passed away. So we, um, we were very committed, uh, mom and dad, once the voters' rights uh, was signed, mom and dad became um, volunteers for over 30 plus years, you know, for all the voting uh, um, administrative assistance in the community. So I was led by wonderful parents and we had such a supporting cast in the community uh, to go to uh, see ball games, to see plays, to visit with um, uh, uh, teachers at HB at the historically black high schools, and to travel with uh, basketball teams or with football teams. It was so unique, so unique. So. Once I went through my education in my hometown, junior high and also high school, I knew that there were some parameters coming from the South that I couldn't get involved with. I questioned, but I didn't have time because I saw my body developing. I had in my mindset that this could take me uh, my, my body and my concentration is, could take me to another level. So I was pretty focused, pretty focused on uh, trying to get to the next level. And that was at a university somewhere. Very cool. So you start playing football and let, let the uh, listeners know, please, where did you go to college, John? Um, I had an opportunity to play anywhere in the SEC, had the chance to play. Penn State was sending me letters, Michigan, Notre Dame, uh, and 
I was really, really appreciative. Even um, Hayden Fry at University of Iowa, they were recruiting me. Oklahoma University were, were recruiting me. I wanted to stay in the South. I wanted to be close. Um, and I chose Vanderbilt. I decided to go to Vanderbilt. Uh, a year, two years before I graduated, they had a phenomenal year. And they had some outstanding um, assistant coaches there, such as Bill Parcells. Um, and um, I, I wanted to get a, a good degree, a good education. Uh, and yet, if I had an opportunity to go pro, so be it. That's awesome. And what a great school to go to. So you did have an opportunity to go pro. You got picked up as a free agent, right? Right. Tell us that let me story, tell you, please. Let me tell you that story. One of the Southeast best scout during that era was a gentleman by the name of Milt Von Mann. Milt was also an English teacher at a Father Ryan High School here in Nashville. Milt was employed with the Cincinnati Bengals. I think he was there for 30 plus years. Milt knew my capabilities as well as I had a couple of other guys, Mike Wright and uh, uh, Ronald Hill. They were my teammates during that era. And at the time we, let's see, 70, 1979, I was a junior in, in college and 80, I graduated. So in, in that era between 79 and 80, Forrest Gregg, the former Hall of Famer for Green Bay Packers, uh, was uh, announced uh, the head coach of Cincinnati. So Milt in, invited uh, Forrest to come down and personally work us out, try us out, you know, because we didn't have a winning season. We didn't have those winning seasons, but Milt, knew we were we were potentially pro players and Forrest also was impressed and Forrest told me um, my senior year he says John he said listen I've been watching you uh, and, and in spite of the fact I had four linebacker coaches and I had two head football coaches within all within four years so I was just erratic running around out there but Forrest told me, he says, we like you. The Bengals want you. And if we don't draft you on, dra on the second day of draft night or third day of draft night, he says, we're going to come after you free agent. Right after the last draft, I got a phone call from the Cincinnati Bengals, and they faxed down the contract wanting me to sign it. story and you know I, I think that's such a great message um dr jen walter was on the podcast a couple of weeks ago and she said you know you don't have to be the best you just have to give it your all and it sounds like you know that worked for you john well you know again running around at cincinnati at the Bengals camp um i knew i was awkward I knew I didn't have the finesse as some of my peers who were from Michigan, who were from Notre Dame, or even the veterans. I felt like maybe I was a better athlete than, you know, as I would match myself, compare myself. But I, I, I didn't have that finesse. So when I was released by Cincinnati, they told me, they said, listen, you're probably gonna get some phone calls from Canada. They, they were here, the scouts were here, and they were really impressed. And we feel, John, if you go to Canada, work on your finesse, we're still gonna be around. We're gonna be looking at you. And, and so be it, and, and that's the way it went. Uh, I got a call from um, Ray Newman, uh, the US uh, uh, American uh, scout for the Edmonton Eskimos. They wanted me up there with that wonderful team. They had won four years in a row, the Grey Cup. And um, uh, Ray said, John, we like you, we want you. We'd like to get you as immediately as possible to come to Canada. 
So I, I went up there and I played for several years. And lo and behold, believe it or not, I know we, we have to talk about the Canadian experience, but lo and behold, Forrest Gregg kept his word. When he accepted the position for the Green Bay Packers, his scouting team, along with his final decision, he wanted me there in Green Bay. So, uh, you know, I, I just count my blessings um, for having someone like Forrest in my life. Yeah, I uh, I think that's so interesting. And I'm, I'm old enough to remember Forrest Gregg as a coach. <laughs> and to, you know, I, I didn't know that story and I really don't, didn't know a lot about his character, but the fact that he kept his word says yes. a lot. And I don't want to make this podcast all about your NFL career, even though that's wonderful and it's beautiful. But John, you're one of those guys who are doing more work off the field than most athletes ever have the opportunity to accomplish on it. So you. after you finished up with Forrest Gregg and the Packers, what did your life become? Obviously, your well, education at Vanderbilt probably prepared you. Well, one more leg to that. When the strike season occurred, Forrest and my linebacker coach who was in Canada and also a former NFL uh, uh, linebacker, Dale Lindsay, they contacted me during the strike season. And they said, John, we'd like for you to come and, 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 and participate. So needing a little health care benefits, my wife was expecting our second child. Starting my own business, I had just started a petroleum distri distribution company, and it was everything was getting in line, getting in order, uh, and, and ain't nothing wrong with cash. So to go to the Packers and and get a little revenue, to receive a full years uh, a full one year of healthcare benefits, I couldn't beat it. You know, I, I thoroughly enjoyed myself. The fans were so uh, uh, welcoming to us. Um, I, I really enjoyed the time I was there um, during the spring break, I mean, during the strike. And Forrest and Dale wanted me to, to sign up and stay for the rest of the season. I said, coaches, I, I said, listen, I said, this would be a childhood dream. However, I got an oil business down in Nashville. I'm trying to get going and it's about ready to take off. I had created a petroleum distribution company initially um, in selling oil, lubricants, gasoline, diesel, you name it, to major corporations such as the Saturn General Motors plant, the state of Tennessee, the cities such as Nashville, Memphis and, and the counties such as Shelby County and Nash uh, in Memphis. Um, I had done some business in Atlanta, um, uh, especially with their modern uh, system, uh, selling lubrications. So things were going quite well for me. Um, as a matter of fact, I was I was looking at a new development from being a distributor to having um, truck stop convenience stores because my father was a was the first African American manager in the state of Tennessee for the A and P food stores. Do you remember the A and P food stores, Atlantic and Pacific? You know we don't have them in the north, as far as I know, John. Not anymore. Okay, I was going to say. I